we work on several questions about time value of money. Time value of money basically talking about uh, how to calculate present value of a lump sum question and the future value of a lump sum question and the present value and the future value of annuity and the present value and the future value of annuity deal. Okay, first uh, let us look at this question. Suppose that you have $200 today and plan to put in a bank account that earns 10% interest per year. How much will you have after five years? Okay. They ask you the question, how much you have after five years? So this is asking you to solve a future value question. So the first we figured out this question is a future value question of a lump sum question. So what means lump sum question is there is only one payment, right? So you have only $200 today. So you are not making a series of payments, only one payment. First, we figured out that if this is a future value of a lump sum question. So we can use the future value uh, formula equal to the present value times one plus interest rate and raised to the power of A. Okay, look at this formula. We have uh, several um, parameters. So this is the, uh, okay, we have the present value and we have the interest rate and the total number of years. Okay, they ask you the question, what is the future value? So you calculate the future value. So how to do that? So this is the present value. We put on $200, interest rate, 10%. The number of time period is five years. Okay. So in Excel, we can handle this question pretty easy uh, using the future value function. So we first uh, type equal sign and then equal to future value open parenthesis okay when you use open parenthesis you can see they ask you the rate number of period payment future value and type okay those parameters are um, supposed to be included in this function and uh, separate each other by comma okay let's do choose the rate Okay, the rate is 10%, right? And then you comma, number of period of five. And okay, next one is payment. Um, because this is a lump sum question, it's a one-time thing, is not going to have any payment. So the payment is a zero. The present value is two hundred dollars so that's a okay now uh, we close the parenthesis so we're gonna talk about the type uh, later on so now we don't need the type because this is only one time you don't have to uh, by default the type is zero so we close the parenthesis and then you press enter so you will find the future value. Okay, the future value is $222.20. Okay, or you can do um, the formula and you double check your solution is correct or not using the formula. 
So equal sign equal to present value, which is $200 times one plus interest rate, 10%, and then you'll raise to the power of five. <clears throat> okay, so when you click on enter, so you see um, the number are exactly the same, okay? However, you can see the future value you calculate. This is a red with a parentheses. So what that means? In Excel, that means this is a negative number. So why you use future value function in Excel, you got a negative number, but you use that formula, so you got a positive number. The reason is that you, in Excel, your present value and future value will be in different direction. That's the cash flow. For example, you have $200 investment. The money goes out of your pocket. And in five years later, the money goes into your pocket. So that's the money uh, you're gonna receive. So typically what we do is that uh, we put the present value negative because that's your investment. So all we call uh, cash outflow, okay? And in the future value, that's the money of your income. So it will be positive or the cash inflow. So when we change the net pre the present value be negative, so we can see that the future value will be positive. Okay, the first question is about the future value of a lump sum question. Okay, let's work on another question. So question two. So you expect to receive $100 in eight years. If you can invest at 10%, what is it worth today? Okay. So that means you gotta receive $100 in eight years. So that $100 is going to occur in the future. So the question is ask you, what is it worth today? So obviously this is a present value question. Okay, a present value of a lump sum question. Okay, just one time. Right? This $100 occurs only one time. This is a present value of lump sum question. So we can use the formula, okay, which is the present value question. Okay, present value is the future value divided by one plus k raised to the power a. So in this question, First, we figured out the parameters. Okay, we have a feature value, which is $100, and interest rate, 10%, and the number of time period, eight years. So, what we need to do is we calculate the present value. Okay. Okay, the present value, this is what we are going to calculate. Okay, we calculate the present value. So in Excel, we can make this one very handy using the present value function. Rate, okay. 10% and then number of years, eight. 
What is payment? Do we have any payment? No, we don't have payment, right? Remember, this is a lump sum question. So payment zero. Feature value, 100. If feature value is 100, so we close the parentheses, so we get the present value. Okay. So we click on enter. That's our present value, $46.65. Okay. To double check our result, so we can apply to the formula. The formula is that present value equal to feature value times one divided by one plus k raised to the power n. Okay, so we have feature value times one over that one plus raised to the power of eight, and we close the parentheses, okay? Okay, so now we click on enter. So we can see that this is exactly the same, okay? Um, so we can limit to our decimals, so we have two decimals. Right, exactly the same. Okay, now we uh, finished our uh, time value of money application with present value and the future value of a lump sum question. But in reality, sometimes we have annuity problem. So the, uh, what do you mean annuity? So annuity is that uh, you have a series of payments um, made at equal time interval. For example, we have a mortgage, so you pay your mortgage monthly, so every month you make mortgage, right? So that's a annuity. So, or you have um, purchased a bond, the bond make coupon payment, so every six months. Okay, that's another question about annuity. So annuity is a series of time payments made at equal time interval. Annuity problem is different from a lump sum question. Remember the lump sum question, we have only one time payment, right? Or oh, that's only one time C, okay? So in order for you to understand the annuity question, so we can talk about another question. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see how much will Jackson have at the end of the fourth year if starting today he invests $2,000 annually for four years at 10%. Okay, so what is this question? So they ask you how much money they have at the end of the first year. So that means that's a future. Okay, so it's going to be future value of annuity. Future value of annuity question. So first we wanted to figure out <clears throat> uh, the parameters. Okay, the first one, they ask you future value. Well, what is the present value? Okay. Does Jackson made any uh, payments right now or, or today? No, okay, present value is zero. Okay, he didn't make any down pay. He, he just make invested $2,000 at the end of the e each year okay, for four years. 
interest rate, 10%. And the number of time period, four years. And you need to have the payment. Okay, the payment is $2,000. Okay, now we calculate the future value. So what will be the future value? Okay, so now we calculate the future value. Okay, the rate, 10%, number of time period is four, and the payment is $2,000. No present value, okay, present value is zero. So that's the future value. So because we have the payment positive, the future value will be negative. So remember, so we can change the payment to negative because the money goes out of your pocket, that's your investment. And then the future value, that's your total income at the end of the first year. Okay, if you made $2,000 investment annually for four years at 10%, okay, at the end of the first year, you will receive total amount of $9,000, That's your future value, okay. So we put that parameter here in order for you to understand, okay, how we do this type of question. But in the future, if you do more practice, okay, so you can just easily type in the future value function. You don't have to organize the way as what I did. So you just type in the numbers in that formula. For example, you just type in the rate, okay, percent the number of time period is type four, and your payment negative two thousand, and then your present value zero. Okay, and then you close the parentheses. Okay, that's it. And then you click on enter, so you will see the numbers, right? The future value. Okay, now we finish the future value for, of annuity question. Okay, next, we work on uh, a question, which is um, different. So let's see how much would the cash flow be worth to you today if you could earn 8% on your annual deposit of $100 at the end of each year for three years. Okay. Okay, when the question asks you how much that money worth today, it will be a present value question. Okay, present value of annuity. Annuity. Okay. So Ask you how much would the cash flow be worth to you today? So first we can see how you can earn 8% interest, okay? The interest rate, 8%. And you have annual deposit, so that's your payment. Okay, we make it $100. Right, and then we have the total number of years, three years, okay. 
they ask you the present value and your future value. Do you have any future value? No, we don't have future value, right? Because uh, you see, you didn't get anything at the end of the third year. Okay, it's only the annual uh, deposit. Okay, so future value is zero. And then now we calculate the present value. Okay, the present value, we're using the function that's called present value function. Okay, the rate, right? 8%, the number of years, which is three. Okay, the payment, $100. And the future value is zero. Okay, so we close the parentheses and then we click on enter. Okay, that's your present value. So the present value is $257.71. Okay, so now we have done our present value and the future value of annuity. So we call this as annuity. Uh, by default, we consider those payment was made at the end of each year. Okay, at the end of each year, this is uh, means that's an ordinary annuity. However, in our, our reality, for example, you make your monthly mortgage payment. So that payment has to be made at the beginning of the year, right? So if that payment was made at the beginning of each year, it will be called annuity due. Okay, it's annuity due. So the difference between ordinary annuity and annuity due is that the payment was made at the beginning of each year for annuity due. Well, for ordinary annuity, the payment was made at the end of each year. Okay, let's work out another question. Okay, for example, you will receive $4,500 in annual payment for five years as the beginning of each year from now. The interest rate is 6% calculate the future value. Okay, so what is this question? Okay, this is the future value of annuity due. Okay, future value of annuity due. How do you know that is annuity due? Because the payment was made at the beginning of each year. Okay, in the future, you have to be cautious. Whenever you see that question, they have something is at the beginning. Okay, that means annuity due. Okay. So now we work on the future value of annuity due question. Okay. First, we, you receive payment. This is annual payment, $4,500. How many years? That's the beginning of each time period for five years. The interest rate is 6%. Okay, so do you have any down pay at the present? No, right? So the present value is zero. So you don't have any, you don't have to put any money down right now, okay? So you, you notice this is going to be an annuity due question. So what you do is that, you calculate the future value. 
Okay, the future value equals, okay, we still use the future value uh, function. The interest rate is 10% as 6%. Number of time period is five. And the payment is $4,500, right? The present value is zero. Okay, next, after the comma, you need to choose type, okay? The type you need to choose is, by default, is end of the period is zero, okay? But now, because this is annual to due, so we need to choose the beginning of the period, okay, it's comma one. You type one, and then you close the parenthesis. Okay, this is the future value of annuity due. So compared to the question we have before, so you need to choose type one. Okay, now you click on enter, that's the future value. Okay, the future value is $226,808.93, okay. okay. Now you can fix that payment because the money goes out of your pocket, so you make it negative, so your future value will be positive. Okay, this question, now we talk about the feature value. Okay. So when it's an annuity due question, remember in that formula we have type one. So, so after the comma, don't forget to type one. Then you make it a uh, annuity due question. Okay. Similar to that, so if you have a present value of um, a new to deal question, for example, this question, question four, okay? Question four, if you have this question, Let's uh, change this to uh, how much would you, would the cash flow be worth to you today if you could earn 8% on your annual deposit of $100 at the beginning. Okay, let's say we change this one to beginning of each year for three years. So this is gonna be a present value of annuity due, right? Because this goes, the payment was made at the beginning of the time period. Present value of annuity due. So the present value, so you can get, you're using the present value function, right? Remember the present value function equal to the present value, okay? The rate you have eight percent. The number of a time period is three years. Okay, and the deposit okay is one hundred dollars. No future value. Okay, now don't forget. Okay, type the one. Okay, this is the the difference. That's two hundred seventy-eight dollars and thirty-three cents. 